In this video, you'll witness the least formidable mantises first, followed by those comfortably resting in the middle of the pecking order, then we'll introduce you to the truly strong, nearly invulnerable, and downright godlike mantises. Finally, we'll show you the most aggressive, voracious, tireless, and lethal insects. Rest assured, no one can escape from them. Out of the 2,400 kinds of mantises living on Earth, we've picked the most fascinating one for today's video. Let's kick things off with the level 1 praying mantis. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. These mantises could be considered the weakest of their kind, and it's hard to argue with that. Moreover, these little critters don't seem to mind as they really fall short when compared to their fellow mantises. Let's start with the fact that out in the wild, both the males and females only grow to about 1.2 inches at most, and some stop at just 0.4 inches. It's like they decide they've hit their growth limit and call it quits. I mean, they are seriously small. You might easily mistake one for a big forest ant, especially with their range of colors, from gray to brown. Female mantises have such tiny wings that they can't really use them, and even males, while in a somewhat better situation, don't typically take to the skies. Some other mantis species do occasionally fly, but these particular mantises prefer to stay on the ground, often hanging out on the soil or leaf litter with only rare ventures onto plants. Instead of flying, they prefer to quickly run around. All in all, when you compare them to other mantis species, it's a bit like comparing a chihuahua to a German shepherd. They're both dogs, but the former is a bit underwhelming. Our next hero is like a second level mantis. It's not particularly large, measuring somewhere between 1.2 and 2.6 inches in length. While that might not seem impressive compared to other mantises, the iris mantis has a clever trick up its sleeve. When faced with a larger and potentially threatening adversary, it puts on quite a show, a sort of bluff, if you will. This tactic is used by animals that have no substantial defenses like swift legs, horns, or special skills. So creatures like praying mantises put on a tough act, and it's safe to say they're quite convincing. The insect turns to confront its assailant by arching its back, lifting its abdomen, and raising its forelimbs while also elevating its wings, revealing its striking, oversized, brightly colored eye patterns. Naturally, anyone encountering a bug with such prominent eyes would feel a bit uneasy, and if it produces some crackling sounds with its top wings, it becomes very clear that it's best to keep your distance. The Egyptian mantis, much tinier than its European counterparts and sometimes even smaller than a level 2 mantis, still manages to be incredibly quick. That's why we rate it as a level 3 mantis. Egyptian mantises don't sport any fancy patterns or colors on their bodies, they simply blend into their surroundings. When they're surrounded by greenery, they turn green themselves. In arid regions without any vegetation, they take on a straw-like color. But the real standout feature here is their speed. These insects can strike and snatch their prey in a lightning-fast .031 seconds. So quick, you won't even see it coming. The Cameroon Mantis has a similar ability with a strike speed of .057 seconds. Let's talk about another African species that's really amped up its speed game. It grows up to 4.7 inches long, which is larger than its fellow insects, but that doesn't mean it can't snatch prey in the blink of an eye. It does it in just .039 seconds. It's also got some pretty remarkable balance. Still, I'd rate all three of these species as level 3 mantises. I've already mentioned European praying mantises. It's time to take a closer look at them. The European mantis comes fourth on our list today. It's considered the biggest and most widespread mantis in Europe, reaching up to 2 or 3 inches in size. Its coloration varies depending on where it lives, ranging from green or yellow to shades of brownish gray or dark brown. But that's not all. Because the European mantis has a unique skill set, it's a real pro at hunting. Its front legs have evolved to swiftly snatch and secure prey, even wasps. While most insects steer clear of wasps, the European mantis faces this threat head-on. It boasts the speed, strength, and cunning needed to nab wasps without risking its own life. 
Thanks to its camouflaging colors, the European mantis can sneak up on wasps unnoticed. When the time is right, it takes a leap, leaving its prey with no chance to even twitch. The mantis then enjoys a wasp feast, starting with the head, and it can keep catching wasps until it's at its fill. Evolution didn't stop there. It decided to see what would happen if it made the European mantis larger. As a result, we now have an insect that's strong enough to hunt and devour lizards from the Agamidi family. It might sound strange because we usually think of reptiles eating insects, not the other way around. Well, seems like mantises don't care much about that. Overall, it's a fascinating phenomenon that we can try to explain logically. You've probably heard that mantises typically live for about half a year, until winter comes. However, I learned today that not all mantises follow this rule. Some species, especially those in regions without harsh winters, can actually survive for a whole year or even longer. European mantises don't enjoy that luxury, though. It's a known fact that the hungrier they are, the bolder their choice of prey. Perhaps European mantises are always in a rush, as they tend to have shorter lifespans, making them more willing to take risks for a quicker meal. After all, they need to keep their lineage going. And let's not forget that, if necessary, or maybe just when they feel like it, mantises can even take on small birds. It may sound pretty creepy as they eat their prey while it's still alive. When it comes to birds, they seize them by the head with their front legs and, through the eye, dig into the skull for a taste of the brain. Bon appetit to those who eat during our videos. While some mantises were busy honing their tactics, agility, and gripping strength, the giant African mantis went all in on its aggressiveness. As if the fact that these insects are about four inches long and engaged in sex cannibalism wasn't enough, the giant African mantis is really bloodthirsty and won't say no to a meaty meal when it's on offer. I'm talking about regular raw meat, not something that's still squirming like live prey. But here's the kicker. These mantises love to stalk their prey and chow down on it with gusto which is why they're a popular choice for keeping as pets. It might sound a bit odd, but many people want a front row seat to the wild side of the animal kingdom, and the giant African mantis can give you that safari experience right in your own aquarium. Plus, as a bonus, these mantises are tough creatures that can handle harsh environmental conditions that would spell doom for other species. Given all this, it's no surprise that these insects earned the fifth spot on our list. Just a reminder, we've got even more formidable mantises lined up later in the video, ones with rare and downright bizarre abilities. These are the insects that make everyone afraid. But for now, let's move on to number six. The orchid mantis stands out as the most stunning of its kind, resembling living orchid blossoms. However, it's not about trying to charm anyone. In nature, animals adopt prominent looks for three main reasons – to attract a mate, to signal their toxicity, or to disguise as something they're not. We have a third option here. When baby orchid mantises hatch, they're actually black and red, which helps them avoid being eaten by predators who mistake them for ants. But later on, they pull off a clever trick known as aggressive mimicry, earning them a level 6 status. This is when predators or parasites pretend to be harmless creatures or even objects, which confuses their prey. Well, or potential hosts. It's a bit like a wolf in sheep's clothing, or in this case, a mantis disguised among orchid petals. Although mantises don't make their homes in orchids, their leg extensions resemble flower petals, making it easy to mistake the two. Orchid mantises come in various shades of white with subtle or vivid pink highlights. Some are entirely white, some are entirely pink, and others have a mix of both colors. Interestingly, the hue of a single mantis can shift over a few days depending on the surroundings and background color, so they're a bit like chameleons. Unlike other mantises, orchid mantises are quite stealthy creatures, mainly because they've got to play the part of a flower, and we all know flowers don't move around much. But when an insect shows up with pollination on its mind, these mantises switch into action mode. They use their powerful front legs to grab even large butterflies and give them a quick bite. Interestingly, the better the female mantises are at hunting, the bigger they get, while the males stay small and hidden. Here's something fascinating. Scientists found that orchid mantises evolved in a unique way. They think that a long time ago, some mantises decided to stay around flowers, 
This allowed them to find more types of food, like pollinating bugs that come to visit the flowers. Then some of the female mantises got bigger so they could eat even more of these bugs, whereas the male mantises stayed small because they needed to wander around and find and mate with females. If you haven't yet realized in this pile of words what uniqueness we're talking about, I'll explain. Large females are found in many arthropods, black widows for example. This is usually because large females produce more eggs and small males are more adept at courting females. But in orchid mantises, it's different. Their large females evolved because they were more successful as predators. Here's another type of mantis that excels in aggressive mimicry while also staying hidden from potential predators. Its appearance is quite remarkable because it genuinely resembles a dried up leaf, especially when you see it from above. It has a flat, stretched out body and a wide prothorax that looks remarkably leaf like. The mantis even has intricate patterns on the top of its wings that bear a striking resemblance to the veins found on leaves. When feeling threatened, the mantis goes into stealth mode, freezing and dropping to the ground while tucking in all its legs to mimic a leaf. If it's disturbed while perched on a branch, it sways gently as though dancing in the wind. In a nutshell, these guys are so committed to staying stealthy that they've even studied how leaves act. However, their wings show a different story with a mostly dark underside adorned with large eye-like spots. So on one hand, these creatures go all out to blend in with leaves, but when push comes to shove, they can stand tall on their hind legs and give a little scare. In my book, they definitely deserve a level 7 rating for that. Camouflage isn't just about blending in with dried leaves. This mantis pulls off a pretty convincing act as a fresh green leaf. Its wide body, wing patterns, and horizontal swaying movements make it look a lot like a leaf. It may seem like it's dancing to some catchy tune, but it's all about staying stealthy. You see, constant swaying makes it tough for anyone, whether it's a predator or prey, to spot it as a threat or a potential dinner. It looks weird. Strangely enough, when the mantis gets up close to its target, it no longer resembles a leaf. Instead, from the victim's perspective, it starts to look a lot like a king cobra. This mantis has taken its disguise game to the next level, but not by trying to look like a snake. There are tiny lichens and mushrooms growing on the pronotum and wings of many of these insects. It's almost as if the mantis is so good at blending in that it's even sprouted its own version of what you'd find on a tree branch. Well, most likely these growths happen naturally, without any effort from the mantis, but they likely helped it hide better. This mantis is small compared to some other species, but its size doesn't stop it from being a dangerous level 9 predator. It's a leopard of the insect world with a robust camouflage that makes it blend in with trees, incredible movement speed, and of course, bloodlust. The way this mantis grabs and eats its prey really looks like the meal of a dangerous predator. <laughs> Unlike other mantises, this little guy, a solid level 10 in my book, has a shorter body but some seriously long legs. When it's time for lunch, it just sits on a tree during the day, blending in like a pro. Its eyes are colored not only to keep its location a secret, but also to give it some top-notch vision. Better than your average bug. And when push comes to shove, this mantis can move quicker than any source of danger out there. Some mantises can come off as rather eerie almost like little aliens prepping you for a ride on their UFO to perform some out-of-this-world experiments. But then there's the spiny flower mantis. Similar to the orchid mantis, it does an impressive job pretending to be a flower and mainly eats airborne insects that swing by to pollinate it. These spiny flower mantises aren't the type to go bug hunting like their cousins. Well, have you ever seen a running flower? No, they prefer to play it cool, even when they feel threatened. They stretch out their wings, flash those eye spots, raise their little legs, and put on a show trying to look large and dangerous. It's worth noting that these mantises only grow up to about 1.6 inches, so trying to intimidate a potential predator when you're that small is quite the feat. The conehead mantis looks like it came here straight out of a fantasy world, like a hybrid of an insect and a dragon. Along with their head protrusion, males sport rather fancy-looking horns, although these are just the antenna. 
Oh, my. Honestly, that cone-shaped head growth gives me vibes of ancient Egyptian pharaoh headwear. Conehead mantises come in various colors spanning from green and different shades of pink to a somewhat dull brown. It really depends on the surroundings they call home. After all, there's no use pretending to be a lovely flower when you're surrounded by nothing but dry grass. Just like other crafty species who use aggressive mimicry, these conehead mantises even sway with the breeze, doing a remarkable job mimicking plants. Despite being labeled as medium-sized by the scientists, these mantises don't just sit around waiting for prey. They're aggressive enough to approach it before a swift attack. Whether it's a cricket, a spider, or even a smaller mantis, they do their usual routine, seize their prey with a powerful grip, and devour it all while it's still alive and kicking. These creatures are a captivating mix of beauty and lethality perfect for level 12. And now as we move closer to level 13, get ready for the most remarkable mantises of all. You might not easily spot this sneaky mantis, but rest assured, it'll spot you thanks to its unique eye setup. While most mantises don't have vision complaints, this particular species stands out by being able to notice movement from up to 60 feet away, which is quite impressive for a little creature. These mantises call the rainforests of South America home, and they've chosen a clever disguise in the form of moss. The shades of green in their body coloration make them practically invisible in their natural habitat. They even have some bumps on their thorax and abdomen, adding to their camouflage. Just like other mantises, they gently sway in the breeze to avoid arousing any suspicion. Tiny hairs on the back of a praying mantis' neck stay in touch with its head, helping it pinpoint where to strike when it spots prey. This system works so well that the mantis manages to nab a meal in 85% of attempts. But before the mantis makes its move, it cleverly disguises itself as a moss-covered branch, tricking its unsuspecting victim. You'd never expect a tree to suddenly lunge at you, right? Well, this tree springs into action, snatching its prey with its enormous branches in a mere 0.03 to 0.05 seconds, four times faster than human muscle reflexes. Actually, humans even blink slower in comparison. The Devil's Flower Mantis, a type of mantis of level 14, has a distinct flower-like appearance. It can grow up to 5.5 inches in length, which is pretty sizable. In the case of females, their wingspan can reach up to 6 inches. This mantis species is quite well known among those who appreciate unusual pets, mainly because of its eye-catching colors and overall uniqueness. From the outside, it sports a charming white-green stripe look, which is cute but not entirely unique. However, what sets it apart are the vibrant red, white, blue, and black patterns on the inside of its front legs. These colors stay hidden when the insect is relaxed, but if it senses danger, it raises its body and extends its forelimbs, revealing its full splendor. To predators, this display may serve as a warning, but to us humans, it's more like, hey, check out my armpits. I settled on level 14 for this mantis because it's known as the biggest flower mimicking type, and when you're that large, you've got to dial up your stealth game to blend in. The Boxer Mantis. Nature decided, why not, and made these little predators, mostly sporting green and brown shades that help them blend in among leaves and stems. Speaking of camouflage, mantises often mimic leaves and flowers, but what really steals the show is their beefed-up front legs. When two mantises of this species cross paths, they both throw their legs up and start waving them around. It looks like a bug boxing match even though they never hit each other. The outcome of this touch-free showdown, and it's definitely impressive enough to put this species at a level 15 ranking, is that one of them ends up backing off. The reason behind this behavior still has scientists scratching their heads. It appears to be a way to communicate. Mantises engage in a slow limb-waving dance when facing each other, revealing distinct patterns on their inner surfaces, and this curious display might serve as a way to discourage them from becoming a meal for a fellow mantis. However, it's a somewhat dubious theory given that mantises aren't known for shunning away from cannibalism. Moving on to the top levels of mantises, let's explore the species that makes it to the top three. This is another tiny mantis measuring just about two inches in length. Despite its size, it sports a stunning growth on its head and goes by the name Ghost Mantis. 
next. You can find these creatures all over parts of Africa, south of the Sahara, and even in Madagascar. They fancy dry spots with bushes and trees. When they sense danger, these mantises pull a clever move by playing dead, lying still on the ground until the coast is clear. Who would have thought that this dried up leaf is actually edible? It's a pretty nifty and cunning survival tactic. Ghost mantises prefer to hunt flies. When they decide to dash and snag a fly, it only takes them a mere 0 0.027 seconds, making them some of the speediest hunters we've discussed today. Their lightning fast moves easily earn them a level 16 rating. Flowers, bark, moss, leaves, how about a stick? It's quite surprising to think that this chip-like creature with similar proportions could actually be a predator. But a mantis is, after all, a mantis. It sports numerous appendages resembling withered leaves on its body, and the body itself resembles a twig. Some biologists might even say it has a poetic resemblance to a violin. This type of mantis acts just like its fellow mantises. It tends to stay put, choosing to lie in wait for its next meal. And this wait can stretch on for hours. While it bides its time, the mantis sways gently in the breeze, concealing its intentions. Patience is definitely a virtue when it comes to this style of hunting. What sets these mantises apart from the rest is quite intriguing. They choose to live and mate in large groups showing no interest in cannibalism. Their menu mostly consists of flying insects, which suggests they don't see their fellow mantises as a meal unless they're starving. But what are you going to do? The Dragon Mantis, a level 18 predator, bears a striking resemblance to one of Tim Burton's characters. Its appearance, coupled with a slightly wobbly walk, makes it look like a swaying branch. Although we've already encountered creatures like that today. So what's so special about the Dragon Mantis? Check out its front legs. Unlike its relatives, the Dragon Mantis positions its front legs close to its head, almost at a right angle to its neck. Why it does this remains a mystery to scientists. Perhaps it's all part of its camouflage game. These mantises are really good at that thanks in part to their incredibly long tails. Seriously, they're so good at it that for scientists, running into a dragon mantis is almost like spotting a unicorn. And it's not just about how rare they are. It's that mantises have seriously upped their stealth skills. All the unique skills and distinctive appearance of mantises can easily be explained by their long history of evolution across different parts of the world and how long these insects have been around. Not too long ago, scientists stumbled upon a remarkably well-preserved mantis fossil nestled within a stone slab in northeastern Brazil. These ancient creatures, which once roamed the Earth around 110 million years ago, coexisted with the dinosaurs and even outlasted them. Based on the fossil evidence, it appears that ancient mantises had more spines on their bodies compared to their modern counterparts. It's not clear whether they needed this extra defense for survival or if they were more aggressive hunters than today's mantises. Nevertheless, the discovery itself is quite remarkable because finding fragile remains of ancient insects is much less common than finding fossils of sturdier creatures with shells or skeletons. It's worth noting that previously researchers have discovered mantises in amber but those specimens were considerably younger, dating back to around 30 million years ago. Don't forget to tell us which mantis you find the most fascinating. My favorite's the dragon mantis. See you later.